Good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigara. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the LA Wave update for the S&P 500 for Sunday, September 6th, 2021. Not much to be added. We left off on Friday after the employment number. We rallied up to a, a new high, the nosedive uh, on follow through on, on the number and its implications, and then rally. Uh, that all fit because I felt it, because it was expiration that they're likely gonna bring it back up because they're going to expire the individual components of the S&P 500 to where they wanted it. And then we'll go from there. But as Grobeck started on Sunday, we rallied. We rallied right on up through the close of the Globex session this morning. And as we begin again in Globex this afternoon, this evening, the market is basically hanging out right where it is, or where it was on the close this morning, and not really dropping all that much further. I think that we're just in a wait and see to how the uh, participants want to come back in tomorrow morning at the start of our trade, how the hedge funds and, and the portfolio managers and just the other options players and players within the S&P are going to come back in tomorrow morning. I'm going to say it is going to be higher and that's based on my count. And as I go through this, I did put the four for the minute four, way four here, slight uh, failure, as I talked about last week, uh, not by much. This low was 45.12.50, and this low was 45.16. So not that big of a failure, but still a failure. Uh, and that it did not put in a new low below this 45.12. Um, and then I believe that we've got wave one of five, wave two of five, and now we're starting in the third. And my anticipation for this third wave is that as within the others, it is going to subdivide. It already is, but it's going to subdivide within that move. So we may just have one, two, three, four, and then a five, and that's just gonna be wave one. So we still have a lot of activity to kind of go through for the market to tell us exactly where and what it's going to do. But I think first off, that it should reach this next resistance zone, which is basically almost a minimum, but still a new high at 45.56, I'm gonna call it, because it's 45.89. So the best it could be is 40, 45.55.75 or 45.56. Those are the choices for where that line's gonna come in. But in any case, I do think we should start to reach this resistance zone. If the rally is, strong as it may be, then I would think that we're going to get up into these levels. And this level is where I believe minor five I have to go out. Minor five would equal minor three at 4573. Well, let me just take this out one additional step so that I can identify these. Because we, we have the intermediates, um, and the intermediates I actually are going to be a little bit higher. So the 100 is where minor five would be equal to minor three. So I have to identify all of our uh, resistance points because we, we do have a lot of sequences finishing. So that's why we get a lot of the four fives, four fives because we have many sequences. We have an intermediate fifth finishing, we have a minor fifth finishing, we have a minute fifth finishing. So they're all working up to that point. So now we've added all the points in between as to where all of this could end up. So this is the minor five. And so that minor five would equal the, the same length as minor three at 45.73. Now we've already gone through that minor five can subdivide again within this minute five and still go beyond this 4573 because wave three is not the shortest wave. Again, within that five wave advance, 
of minor degree. And so we can be expecting a, a lot more, to be honest with you. So again, 4556 is just the minimum level for a minute five. Then it's just coming into 0.236 of minute three. Up here at 4581, it's just 0.382. We're not getting up into the common areas. And so we start to break above 4,600. So I continue to expect that from the market. Now, what I've said all along, it's going to be based on the actual structure and my ability to count clean five waves of sub minute degree to complete the minute five. So again, one, two, beginning of three. So we're going to just play it tightly and as we should. So again, <clears throat> wave three may come up and get into this zone. And then we pull back again in the four, or this is gonna be wave one of three. So again, being that it's a third wave, I would expect that we're going to start to see like this three, there was two, that was three, and it, it accelerated twice. It subdivided twice. So it's subdivided within the third and then it's subdivided within the fifth. So again, wave one, two, could be subdividing within that third, and then maybe subdivide again in the fifth, all our possibilities, and that's what will propel us up into these zones. So let's go over the zones. First, 4556, then 4573 to 4581. Then we have 4600, 4601. I would suspect because it's a round number, it is um, a large round number because it's also uncharted territory up here. So I'm gonna say 4600 to 4601 to two is going to provide some resistance. And again, there may be some stops sitting there. So it could force a little bit throw over as the stops are triggered. And then we come back. No matter where we stop and we pause, if we can count five, I'm looking for three. So it's gonna be five up, three down, five up. So where minor, or excuse me, minute five will be equal to 0.618 of minute three is up here at 4622. So as we have been discussing, we are now beginning to see clusters forming. This level also at 4625 represents where minor wave five will be 1.236 times the length of wave three. Common, common extensions within five. These are where they start to come in. 1.236, 1.382. We have them. Now we've got them covered. Out here, intermediate five would be equal to 0 0.382 of intermediate three at 4677. So you can continue. We see that we're building the zones all based on fifth waves as compared to their third waves of that degree. And that's why we've got all these clusters. So these are all potential completion points all the way up. And that's how I have to look at this because I feel that it's just gonna, as I've been saying, stair, step its way up. We have a series of four and five, and then of four and five. So we continue to do fours and fives all the way up. And now we're getting up into the finishing stages of all of that. So we are in minute five, my estimation, minute five of minor five, which will complete intermediate five, which will complete primary five, which will complete cycle five. So again, I keep reiterating all of that because I, I feel it's important to understand the top that we're reaching, not the end of the world, but still a major top nonetheless. So we're staring down the barrel at what I would think would be a, a fairly large correction. And if it starts, I don't want to be fooled like we were here in terms of, well, it could be just in a, in a you know, an irregular B wave, et cetera, et cetera. I really would expect one of that degree to this is done. They're going to just start selling. And it should form a very quick five waves down again on this hourly chart. So for tomorrow, again, tomorrow is Rosh Hashanah. And being a holiday, 
um, we may again may see slow markets, or we may again see what many people do term is that there's the period between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, where in the past, the market has shown weakness and some stronger weakness during that period. So a lot of that's gonna be factored in or people are gonna be looking for things because these, this is the way it's been in the, in the past. But I feel this entire rally, this entire bull ending bull phase has really broken the status quo. And that's what, you know, after Rosh Hashanah, we have a week period in September. It's kind of like the status quo. And I think that could be broken. So maybe it will, and maybe it'll be instead of going down, we will continue to rally. Nothing seems to bother the market. Nothing seems to bother the players in the market right now. The buyers continue to show up and the market continues to rise against not the greatest un unemployment figures, not the greatest news from the Fed that they are gonna start tapering and they may start doing it this year. Well, we don't have that many months left. We're in September. September, October, November, December, boom, you know, you got four months when they might start tapering October. I don't know. So again, we've got plenty out there that could switch the gears of what the market has been doing. And I believe once that does catch on, then we could start to see some acceleration because when more and more algorithms and more and more investors and more and more hedge fund managers have to come in and start correcting or have to come in and start getting out, I think we really could start to see some activity to the downside. Um, for tomorrow, hopefully it's not going to be slow, but I do think that we will have an upward bias tomorrow. If the market starts to break down, then really what I'm looking for, again, let me just open this up. We're going to have to be relying on our moving averages. So right now, the, the four and the eight, they're going to play along with pretty much what the market is actually doing. We have the 20 at 45, 40 to 41. That's what I've been looking for overnight. If it starts to break there, then I know we're going to come down to the 45, 37, which is the 50. But this is the one that if they come down and break, I think that the market's in trouble, at least on our hourly charts and our day-to-day -day basis. So if it comes down to 45.50 and it breaks below that 200 day moving average, and again, as we move up to our daily, it starts breaking below the eight and the 20 and the 50 on the daily, then we're showing, the, the market is showing us weakness and that's the display of weakness. And then, then we react accordingly. So, but even here on this little chart, this is pretty messy, but we have seen this before. We have seen messy, and we've seen them just turn around and blast it through the roof. So topping processes aren't always neat and tidy. They can be very messy. And now we've been in this topping process for several months. So sloppy, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Um, but again, one, two, three, small four. If this holds, we get higher. We start to break to new highs. So far, it's 45.49. I'm expecting it at least to get to 45.55, which sits right above all of this, and then heading towards the upper end of that, 45.73, 45.81. Now, from here, that, that would be quite, quite a rally. It would be a 40-point rally. Can the S&P do it? Of course. We've seen it. And we've seen the Dow blast through the roof. Um, I have done some, some analysis on the cash Dow, you know, the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial, the cash index, and it has targets up above 36,000. And that's what I keep waiting for. So when I start to see that everything is lining up at the expected highs, well, then we're picture is getting more complete. But thus far, we get the NASDAQ moving up, we get the S&P moving up, but the Dow moves up, but doesn't get to the new high. Or the Russell doesn't get up to even close to its previous high, its all time high. And so that would put the markets more in sync in this topping process, but that doesn't necessarily have to happen. Let me also say that there have been market moves where one market makes a new to all time, all -time new high as in 2000, and to, or just 2008, 
2009, when the Dow went up above 14,000, all by itself put in a new all-time high. S&P got close, but did not do it. And then the market collapsed in the great financial collapse of 2009, uh, 2008, 2009. Same situation can happen again. But I'd like to see the markets get more in sync with each other in terms of what, uh, in, in, in reaching the heights. Not one selling off as the other three are, are racing towards a high. I'd like to see them all kind of go up together, maybe not all reaching new highs together, but at least all going up together. So we know that we're kind of getting up close to that peak and the completion of all of these advances. So tomorrow, I've been looking for these to hold. I've been looking for the rally to pick back up. We do have all of our resistance points. And I put the last sequence on, which would show us the uh, minute five. And that's all of this right here. So I continue to look for at least a move about 4,600 and up into this zone. And we do get pretty stacked up. We got 46, 22, 25, 37, and 51. Those are all pretty far up there, but you can see 51 to 58, and then they start to cluster again. They cluster again up at the top, 4677 to 4688. So that's why I think we've got all these clusters and they all are related in terms of completing fifth waves. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna leave it right now. Hope everybody has a really great trading day tomorrow. Just remember to follow your moving averages. If the market starts to break down, even though it doesn't appear that we should get that strong of a breakdown, <clears throat> it may do just that. And if that's gonna be the case, then we're gonna be able to trade against what our moving averages are telling us. You then can put Fibonacci retracements, extensions <clears throat> on the moves that are happening. So good luck trading tomorrow, have a great day. And the next update will be on Tuesday, September 7th.